It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 1039, Kill Inner Clutter Before It Kills You, and How to Get Back to What You Love, both by Courtney Carver of bemorewithless.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year to help you optimize your life. And I have two posts today for you from Courtney Carver. Her year-long simple living course just opened up for next year. Registration is discounted right now. You can learn more at oldpodcast.com slash learn. And before we get to our two posts, I wanted to recommend Simple Life Nutrition. They're a company that provides organic, vegan, Moringa oleifera products, which are super nutritious. Visit simplelifenutrition.com to learn more about the benefits. And Optimal Living Daily listeners get 15% off their first order with the code OLD15. Again, that's simplelifenutrition.com and the code OLD15. Now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Kill Inner Clutter Before It Kills You by Courtney Carver of bemorewithless.com. While physical clutter is not easy to get rid of, it is easy to identify. When you are ready, you can put it in a box and donate it or sell it. Digital clutter, seemingly invisible, is also very evident. You see it when you open your email, jump into iTunes, or sort through folders on your desktop. What about your inner clutter, the emotional baggage, the what-ifs and if-onlys, the why-me's? What can you do about that voice inside your head that never lets you fully move forward? Let's face it, stress kills. Stress causes or exacerbates disease. Stress makes us sad and anxious. One of the greatest causes of stress is inner clutter. It's hashing through things that have already passed or have yet to happen. The worry and angst that you put yourself through will kill you. If it doesn't literally kill you, it will kill the person you want to be, the person you deserve to be, the person we deserve to know, the person you are. The most obvious forms of inner clutter include guilt, regret, judgment, overwhelmingness, bitterness, fear, and worry. There are others, but most come back to a form of these. They may be a part of life, but they don't have to be an ongoing part of life. You can release yourself from this inner clutter. How to kill inner clutter. Responsibility. Isolate your inner clutter and take responsibility. If you live with daily guilt, ask why. Is there something you can do right now to apologize or fix what you've done? If you identify that you haven't done anything wrong, perhaps guilt is not yours to feel after all. Will a note or a call of apology change the past? No, but it can change the present. Accept responsibility for your fear and anxiety and admit that it's been holding you back. Only then can you begin to work on a solution. If you are angry, sad, scattered, or worried for no identifiable reason, accept that too and ask for help. Gentleness. You can accept responsibility even for something you've been holding on to for years without the harsh words and critique that you think you deserve. You served your time. Remind yourself that you cannot change the past and revel in the idea that today you will change. Today, you will do the right thing. Praise your progress. Awareness. When you are short-tempered or angry about something silly, pay attention. There is something behind the needless argument or harsh word. What is it? It's tempting to put the blame somewhere else, but if you can be aware of your actions, you can begin to take responsibility. Do it anyway. Your feelings and emotions can stop you in your tracks. They'll tell you that you aren't good enough. They'll tell you not to bother. They'll tell you that it's too hard and really scary. So what? Do it anyway. You can quiet your mind with action and purpose. Let go. You failed. You disappointed. You hurt someone. You can't fix it. If that is the case, it's time to recognize your mistakes and let them go. Holding onto the pain isn't making anything better. Instead, it's getting in the way of your lovely life. If you woke up today, you have an incredible opportunity to live a brand new day. Take it, run with it, make the very most of it. Engage. We are a society of multitaskers, but we can only really think one thought at a time. Find something you're amazingly interested in. Learn a new skill, make new friends, help people. Jump in and give it your energy and focus. Dismiss your past transgressions, not through denial, 
but through purposeful attention to something meaningful. When you are thoughtfully engaged in something that matters, you don't have time to judge and assume. You won't have the energy to torment yourself for the things you did or didn't do. It's time to stop thinking you can make up for what you did wrong by punishing yourself. It's time to stop punishing others for what you think they might have done wrong. They are punishing themselves. Don't ignore bad behavior. Don't forget misguided actions, but forgive them, let them go, and start living. If you need help, seek it. And I have another post for you in a minute, but first, nutrition is something I often overlook. Simple Life Nutrition is a company that provides organic and vegan Moringa oleifera products. Moringa is known as the Miracle Tree. It's been featured by the New York Times, the Huffington Post, Dr. Oz, and more because it's extremely nutritious with over two dozen vitamins and minerals, all nine essential amino acids, and over 40 known antioxidant compounds. I've been drinking the tea, they have different products. I am enjoying the tea, they have lemon, pomegranate, and original flavors, and they all taste great. Come try it out. Visit simplelifenutrition.com to learn more about how Moringa can benefit your nutritional needs and support your overall wellness. Optimal Living Daily listeners get 15% off their first order with the code OLD15, plus a dollar for every sale with that code will be donated to Feed the Children, which is a nonprofit helping feed malnourished children. Again, that's simplelifenutrition.com and the code OLD15. How to Get Back to What You Love by Corny Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com I rave about the benefits of yoga and how much I love going to yoga classes, but recently I stopped going. Last June, my yoga studio closed and I had trouble finding another good fit. There are great options in my neighborhood, so the trouble was mostly on my end. I loved my other studio and community so much that I had trouble with the transition. I continue to practice on my own during my morning routine, But after practicing with a wholehearted teacher, I realized that practicing alone wasn't enough. Many people have powerful solo yoga practices, but I thrive in the class setting. Practicing yoga, meditation, and other magical things in Costa Rica brought me back to what I love most about yoga. Tomorrow I'll be attending my first class in a local studio. I've never been there before, but I wanna take the momentum and inspiration I brought home with me and set it into motion before it wears off. If there is something you've abandoned over the past year or even longer, here are three steps to help you get back to what you love. Identify your why. Why do you love drawing, running, yoga, meditation, clean eating, or whatever it is that you've fallen away from recently? Use your why as leverage to commit. For instance, I believe that yoga heals my body and brain, and 100% of the time after I practice with a group, I feel better than before we started. How can I argue with that compelling information? Do it with someone else. I practiced my morning routine all alone, but hanging out with like-minded people reminded me that I needed the energy, accountability, and joy that comes from being with awesome people. For you, that can mean a class or group setting or one accountability partner to encourage and keep you on track. There is a place for solitude and a place for people, and when you are starting a new habit or going back to what you love, you need your people. Set a goal or parameters. Write down your plan. I put a few yoga classes in my calendar and will build my workday around them. I'm committing to a minimum of three classes a week for one month at the same studio. Putting the plan on paper will make it impossible to ignore. Practicing what you love takes time and energy, but it pays you back with more energy and focus so you can better use the time you have. It's not always easy going back to what you love, but once you take the first step, you'll fall in love all over again. When you get back to what you love, you'll feel more love and be more loving. Get back to what you love. It's time. You just listened to the post titled Kill Inner Clutter Before It Kills You and How to Get Back to What You Love both by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. And a quick reminder, Courtney Carver's 12-month program on simple living just opened up for 2019, and the price is discounted for 30 days starting now. The program gives you the resources, support, and encouragement you need to live a simpler life, and features authors we narrate on all of our shows. So to check it out and learn more, come by oldpodcast.com learn. 
but that'll do it for the Monday episode. I hope you're having a great start to your week and I'll be back tomorrow reading to you where your optimal life awaits.